This is the so-called new 8-band transceiver from Quansheng that is going to bury the Bofeng UV5R, apparently. So, is it any good? Does it work? Does it really have 8 bands? Does it receive airband? Is it better than the UV5R? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. So, I'm seeing these advertised at anywhere between £16 and £37 at the moment, and the average is around £26, so pretty competitive compared to the Bofeng UV5R. As for the 8 bands, well, let's break this down. It appears to receive on the 6 meter and 4 meter amateur bands, but I doubt the circuitry and the filtering inside the radio will enable it to actually receive radio traffic on these bands at any great distances, especially on 6 meters. The antenna isn't cut for these frequencies, but we'll see. Next is the FM broadcast band, and yeah, it received this quite nicely. A thing that seems to be quite common on these cheaper radios lately is airband receive, and it does work. It demodulates AM airband signals quite adequately, and very similarly to some of the other transceivers that have airband receive as well. Is it as good as a scanner? No, but it works. Next we have what looks like 5 more bands, and a big bonus for anyone new to two-way radios, but this is just really VHF and UHF. 136 to 174 MHz is good for receiving analog PMR traffic and transmitting on the 2 meter amateur band. 174 to 349 MHz on receive only is really useless. The military airband, or part of the whopping 225 to 399 MHz it covers, is in this portion of the radio, but it really only receives FM signals here, not AM, so it's of no use. 350 to 399 MHz is all military airband as well, but again the radio is FM only, so it's pointless. 400 to 470 on transmit is fine for transmitting on the 70cm amateur band, receiving PMR446 or PMR analog traffic. And finally, 470 to 600 MHz on receive only is really of no use. This radio has some great features for the price. If you're in the USA, you get 10 NOAA weather forecast channels. It also has wireless frequency copy from other radios, which means if you want to get on the same frequency as another user, you can do. It has a scrambler. It scans CTCSS tones and DCS codes, so you can see what people are using and then join them. It has USB-C charging, 200 memory channels, and 20 FM broadcast radio channels. The styling on this thing is great too, it has similar buttons to some of the Yaesu handhelds and looks a lot nicer than the Bovang UV5R with the orange accent and large bright screen. In the box you'll receive the radio, a 1600mAh battery, a wrist strap, a drop in mains charger and a belt clip. Now there's a couple of points to clear up that I've noticed while playing with this radio. Firstly, there's an AM on and off switch. I tried turning this on on a military airband frequency, but the radio remained in FM mode. Secondly, the manual advertises crossband operation. This isn't a crossband radio, it just means that it'll monitor NOAA channels in the background and switch over to them when it detects traffic. When the traffic on the NOAA channel stops, the radio will then switch back to the frequency you're monitoring. The radio is fully computer programmable using software and a Kenwood or Bofeng style programming cable and of course you can set the radio up from the front face. So let's head out and do a couple of tests. I'm going to a new spot today around 6 or 7 miles away and we'll transmit back to base and see if we can make it back. As you can see the terrain here is quite hilly and that could hamper any attempt to reach base but I'm quite confident. We'll also put some calls out on 2 meters and 70 centimeters and see if we can make a contact. I also want to see if this radio will receive some 6 and 4 meter signals. I've got antennas with me and there's usually activity on 4 meters during the day. Okay, this is a test of the Bofeng UV5R on 145.350. 5, M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Bofeng UV5R on 145.350. 12345 
M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Quansheng UVK5 on 145.350, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Quansheng UVK5 on 145.350, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Bofeng UV5R on 433575. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Bofeng UV5R on 433575. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Quansheng UVK5 on 433.575, 12345, 54321, M3HHY. Okay, this is a test of the Quansheng UVK5 on 433.575, 12345, 54321, M3HHY. The name, but um, yeah, I'm just on a place called the Nab. Uh, it's, it's also known as the Budgie Perch, just just on the edge of Derbyshire, um, very very near to Stockport, and really good takeoff from up here across uh, across Manchester. Yeah, to us, Lewis. Yeah, no problem, mate. Yeah, I know where the Nab is. Never worked from there myself. I only get as far as worth as low these days. But uh, yeah, I believe it's a good place. Everyone I've worked from there has been a cracking signal into where I am in Thameside, mate. Yeah. We've worked at, uh, when I was 2 is okay, JC. Uh, I think we did a bit of a, uh, a YouTube session on the air, but uh, talking about various things. You were out mobile at the time. Yeah. Ah, that's the one, Chris, yeah. I remember you now. Um, yeah, I think we were on, did we, did we go around 446 last time, or I, I can't remember. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a cracking spot, and it looks down on Werner's Low, uh, so a really, really good spot. So I was looking around on Google Earth and, and found it, and thought I must give it a go so while the sun's out and it's a rare occurrence in Manchester as you know uh, Chris being down in Thameside um, I thought I'd make the most of it back to you yeah I'll copy it mate yeah. yeah can you see the Ashton Ikea from where you are uh, the Ashton Ikea yes I can in in the very very yeah it's right in the distance but I, I can see it uh, Chris yeah yeah, Roger, yeah, I'm more or less know where you are then. Are there places to park up there, Lewis, or are you just on the road? There's a lay-by, um, probably big enough for about 10, 10 cars to park, so it's 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 not bad at all. Hey, yeah, Roger, let's have a look at some stage. Yeah, it is uh, it is chilly, about five degrees, five six degrees up here. It was it was seven down in Stockport before, but it's, there's quite a wind as well knocking about, Chris. So makes it a little bit harder and there's a ram there's, there's been a ram sort of wandering around as well keeping an eye on that as, <laughs> as well in case that decides to charge you at any moment back to you <laughs> yeah what a good do g4 ukv g4 ukv m3 hhy very good morning hey, good morning lewis my name is ian and i'm in uh, in altrincham south manchester Nice signal from you, no problems. I'm interested to know what radio you're using today. I thoroughly enjoy your uh, YouTube channel. Been uh, looking at it for what, some years now. And uh, and thank you so much for putting it on. It's uh, it's a pleasure to watch. M3HHYG4UKV, over. G4UKV, M3HHY Mobile. No worries, thanks, uh, thanks very much. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I'm on the I'm on a Quansheng um, UV K5, um, so it's a, it's a, a really cheap um, handheld, but it seems to be doing okay and uh, okay on Altrincham as well. I know the uh, I know the area very well. So uh. yes, okay, Lewis. Oh, that must be a wonderful view. Don't know quite where you are, but uh, I'm 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 busily trying to sort out some uh, mobile HF setup. I'm going to try uh, Tatton Park and uh, pay me four pounds with me blue badge and uh, they've got a big lake there so I'm going to stick up a uh, uh, sidewinder uh, aerial up uh, in the ground uh, by the lake and see if I can uh, uh, see if I can uh, get some benefit from that. Uh, uh, we do a lot of motoring in, in France and uh, in Europe. So uh, I'm hoping to get some very high spots in Europe and uh, see what I can do from there, Lewis, over. M3HHY Mobile, yeah, that sounds like a plan, both on the uh, 
on the the European the European radio road trip and and Tatton Park as well. Okay, well I'll uh, I'll say seven three. I'm going to put one more call out um, so we can make another contact and then I'll uh, I'll call it a morning and uh, I'll catch you further down the log. Uh, G four, I think it's G four. Apologies if that's wrong. Uh, G four UKV M three HHY Mobile seven three in. Thanks for the kind words and we'll catch you again. Yes, okay, thank you, Lewis. Um, well, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I must say, you, 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 you do an awful lot of research on uh, on some of the subjects that you uh, you put in your videos, and uh, and I commend you for that. It, it's obviously a lot of hard work. It's not just the presentation; it's the work that goes on behind the scenes. And again, thank you. So, seventy three. Have a great day, and uh, bye bye. G four UKV clear. M3HHY, G6GVI. G6GVI, M3HHY, very good morning Ross, hope you're okay. Um, we're currently on uh, a place called the NAB, or the Budgie Perch. Uh, I'm just watching a, an aircraft turn into Manchester there. Um, just on the edge of Derbyshire, um, just outside Stockport. Right, oh, well that sounds like a very good uh, spot uh, there Lewis, I trust the sun is shining on you as it is uh, here. Yeah, that's a good direction from here really, um, I'll just put this aerial up about half an hour ago actually, it's a dual band uh, 270 collinear. I don't know if it works or not, but uh, clearly it does. G6 GVI. G6 GVI, M3HHY Mobile, yeah okay Ross, no worries, well yeah, you, you're um, a really strong signal up here, um, I think you're in, are you in Bolton? But yeah, you, you, you're 5 and 9, uh, 5 and 9, a little bit of noise um, on the signal, which is usually the case for anywhere around here from, I think caused by reflection somewhere, but yeah, um, absolutely, um, absolutely uh, cracking signal up to the perch, and uh, yeah, I've just come out today, done a couple of uh, tests on 2 and 70 with a, a new handheld, just to see how it works and it seems to be doing uh, doing okay I think you're the third contact the first on 70 like I say um, I never usually call on 70 because there's nobody there and maybe that's me contributing to the problem <laughs> uh, I wonder if the net's going to be on today because I, this, this radio receives on six and um, four meters only as a handheld so I'm going to hook up the external uh, four meter aerial on a mag mount on the car and see if I can uh, I can hear any stations back to you. There's a good chance that there'll be some activity. I've got the four meter set on at the moment actually. But if you want me to do you a quick test on the six meter, I actually have a six meter uh, a vertical aerial up as well at the moment, temporarily. Anyway, yes, four meters. I think it, I think it's only been four meters that we spoke on actually, and um, we were just recalling this yesterday. Actually, I was chatting with Paul, M7 um, MVF, and another station, and um, Paul was mentioning your uh, YouTube videos. And uh, I, I, um, I listened to the, t the ones that I've been on, and, and quite a few others actually. There's a lot of interesting stuff there. Thanks for all the effort uh, you put in on those. But I was particularly um, interested in list listening to how my uh, um, four meter signal sounds coming out of your radio. That was the um, Retivis uh, thing you were testing a few months back. And it really does sound good, doesn't it? Uh, so I tried to receive a signal from Ross on 6 meters, but even with the squelch open and a 50 megahertz whip attached, I heard nothing. 4 meters, however was a mixed result, on the mag mount whip on the roof of the car I heard nothing as well, this may have possibly been due to the antenna overloading the receiver in the radio, however on the supplied helical from my Anytone 4 meter handset the radio received 4 meter signals from a local net quite nicely. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Paul. Yeah, well, that was that came through uh, clearly enough from the Dudden uh, contest uh, team, uh, as they call themselves. But I was really surprised to hear that you picked up a, some of the signal from the guy down in uh, Dorset. I didn't hear him from here. The furthest ones I got was uh, um, Ipswich and um, and Chelms and um, is it Colchester, where John ZTR is. The two Johns, anyway, XTY and ZTR. But I, had, I think I ended up with 12 uh, contacts yesterday and nine different locator squares. That would have been a good one for a Tuesday night. But uh, there aren't any bonuses on the uh, on the Sunday microwave group contest. And I left it monitoring on um, on 70 SEMs and uh, Lewis popped up, M3HHY. So I've just been having a, a little uh, natter with him. And he's up on uh, near Wernerslow, a place called the NAB, I believe. And he's he testing a couple of handhelds and uh, he may even have a 4 meter one with him. So I just... So that's the Quansheng UV-K5. Is it better than the Bofeng UV-5R? Well, it worked just as well. It has airband receive, it receives on 4 meters, and it has better styling. So, quite possibly.